Hello, my name is Heather Mitru, and I am a board certified behavior analyst with Brett Zenovi and Associates. Today, I'll be discussing a variety of antecedent based interventions and how to use them based on individual learners or in a classroom. Items from the fifth edition task list that I will cover are G1, using positive and negative reinforcement procedures to strengthen behaviors. G2, use interventions based on motivating operations and discriminative stimuli. G13, use the high probability instructional sequence. And G14, use reinforcement procedures to weaken behaviors. An antecedent is an event or stimulus change that occurs before a behavior. An example could be a teacher telling her students playtime is over and it's time to clean up. If a student has a history of engaging in challenging behaviors when preferred items are being removed, then being told to clean up can cause a problem. However, by implementing antecedent-based interventions ahead of time, there can be a decrease of challenging behaviors and an increase of on-task behaviors. According to the third edition of Applied Behavior Analysis, an antecedent-based intervention is implemented prior to and independent of the target behavior's occurrence. The first antecedent-based intervention I will review is having an enriched environment. An enriched environment provides non-contingent access to preferred reinforcers. Doing a preference assessment ahead of time is recommended to having a higher likelihood of success. Once preferred items have been identified, parents or classroom staff can provide individuals with continuous access to these items during activities in which they engage in the challenging behaviors. As the frequency of the behavior decreases during these activities, teachers or parents can begin to limit learners' access to these items over time. The next intervention I will discuss is high probability sequence, or high p High probability instructional sequence is when the instructor gives three to five tasks or instructions for the individual to complete quickly with compliance before the instructor provides low probability tasks, which require more response effort. For example, a parent tells their child to put their shoes on, on which causes a full tantrum. So here's what the sequence can look like. Clap your hands. That was awesome. Now jump up and down with me. Great job. Now stomp your feet. Oh, wow. Now please put on your shoes, which is the low P probability behavior. The child complies and puts on their shoes. For high probability sequence to be the most effective, make sure the high probability requests are in the individual's repertoire. Present the high P request quickly. Praise after each completion of a high probability instruction. Immediately provide the low P probability instruction. The final antecedent intervention I will discuss is non-contingent reinforcement. This is when reinforcement is delivered on a fixed or variable time schedule, independent of the learner's behavior. The individual receiving reinforcement freely and functions as an abolishing operation, meaning it reduces the motivation to engage in behavior. For example, a student whose behavior is maintained by attention from the teacher will receive attention from the teacher on a variable schedule of every five minutes. If attention is freely given, then there will be a decrease of the challenging attention-seeking behaviors. In the article, Non-Contingent Reinforcement, Enriching the Classroom Environment Reduces Problem Behaviors, the author provides a table to represent the five steps to implement NCR in the classroom. It begins with defining the problem behavior and then collecting data on that behavior in order to determine what the schedule of providing NCR will be, and then eventually thinning out the schedule and fading. The next figure is an example of NCR planning worksheet. On this worksheet, you will see the written out steps that were previously discussed. The calculation on how to figure out what the schedule and how often to provide non-contingent reinforcement. In this example, the teacher is providing the student, Adam, non-contingent reinforcement every 90 seconds. As always, to help disseminate the science of ABA, please subscribe to our channel and share this video. Thanks.